Namaste. So in the last episode, we were talking about the second sutra, the second adhikarana of the first pada of the first chapter, or adhyaya of Brahma Sutra. Brahma Sutra begins, Atato Brahma Jignasa. Now, therefore, it is time to inquire into Brahman. And the next sutra is, What is Brahman? Janmadhyasyayataha. Brahman is that from which everything arises. So then there is a dialogue with the opponent. And the opponent, as a typical mental speculator, materialistic, impersonalist, whatever, Mayavadi, <laughs> Neo-Edwaitan uh, user of bad logic, is trying to put forward the argument that this is an inference. Brahman is that from which everything arises? Because there is no proof. You cannot see everything, the universe, space, time, matter, and so on, arising from Brahman, because you're not there to witness it. That's before the human beings and so on were created, even the worlds that the human beings live on. So there's no way to go back and verify it. Therefore, the argument can be made that, oh, this is simply an inference, a logical uh, proof of your idea, your philosophy. But then Shankaracharya says, no, take a look at the last page that we quoted. Therefore, the aphorism, that from which, etc., Janmadhyasyayataha, is not meant to present an inference. For what is it then? For presenting an Upanishadic text, which again is that Upanishadic text that is thought to be referred to by the aphorism? It is this, starting with Bhrigu, the well-known son of Varuna, approached his father Varuna with the request, O revered sir, teach me Brahman. So here we have the first instance in only the second sutra of the whole Brahma sutras of 555 sutras, where Shankaracharya goes back and analyzes the source he brings in, quotes verbatim the Upanishad, Taitriya Upanishad. And this becomes the context for the rest of the discussion. So I think it would be a good idea to actually read the whole passage. It's only six or seven verses long. But it's very, very important and influential in the development of the theme of the Brahma Sutra. Bhrigu, the well-known son of Varuna, approached his father Varuna with the formal request, O revered sir, teach me Brahman. To him, he, Varuna, said this, Food, vital force, eye, ear, mind, speech. These are the aids to knowledge of Brahman. To him he, Varuna, said, Crave to know that from which all these beings take birth, that by which they live after being born, that towards which they move and into which they merge. That is Brahman. He practiced concentration. He, having practiced concentration, he realized food, that is, Virat, the gross cosmic person, as Brahman. 
for it is verily from food that all these beings take birth. On food they subsist after being born, and they move towards and merge into food. Having realized that, he again approached his father Varuna with the formal request, O revered sir, teach me Brahman. To him he, Varuna, said, Crave to know Brahman through concentration. Concentration is Brahman. He practiced concentration. He, having practiced concentration, knew the vital force as Brahman. For from the vital force, indeed, spring all these beings. Having come into being, they live through the vital force. They move towards and enter into the vital force. Having known this, he again approached his father Varuna with the formal request, O revered sir, teach me Brahman. To him, he, Varuna, said, Crave to know Brahman through concentration. Concentration is Brahman. He practiced concentration. Having practiced concentration, he knew mind as Brahman. For from mind, indeed, spring all these beings. Having been born, they are sustained by mind, and they move towards and merge into mind. Having known that, he approached his father Varuna again and made the formal request. O oh, revered sir, teach me Brahman. To him he, Varuna, said, Crave to know Brahman through concentration. Concentration is Brahman. He practiced concentration. Having practiced concentration, he knew knowledge as Brahman. For from knowledge, indeed, spring all these beings. Having been born, they are sustained by knowledge. They move towards and merge in knowledge. Having known that, he approached his father Varuna again with the formal request, O oh, revered sir, teach me Brahman. To him, Varuna said, Crave to know Brahman through concentration. Concentration is Brahman. He practiced concentration. He, having practiced concentration, knew bliss as Brahman. For from bliss, indeed, all these beings originate. Having been born, they are sustained by bliss. They move towards and merge in bliss. This knowledge, realized by Bhrigu and imparted by Varuna, starts from the food self and terminates in the supreme bliss, established in the cavity of the heart. He who knows this becomes firmly established. He becomes the possessor of food and the eater of food, and he becomes great in progeny, cattle, and the luster of holiness, and great in glory. You see why I wanted to read that? <laughs> it's amazing. The Upanishads are just amazing because they portray the process of self-realization in such a direct way. So let's recap what happened. Bhrigu went to Varuna. Now Varuna is a demigod and Bhrigu is a divine sage. But at that time, he was just born. He was a kid. So he went to his father as his first guru and said, teach me Brahman. Formally, he formally requested his own father, please teach me Brahman. And so he said, concentrate, practice concentration. And so Bhrigu went off and practiced concentration and he realized the levels of Brahman. First he realized him as food and then as the mind and then as knowledge, and then as bliss. Finally, he himself merged into that bliss and realized himself as Brahman. So this is the goal towards which we are all working, huh? that towards which we are all moving. 
and that in which we are all going to merge. Sooner or later, it's just a matter of time. So the Upanishads are giving these great secrets. This is why they were taught in a confidential circumstance in the woods, only among renunciants and highly qualified brahmanas. And, and this is why those who were given these secrets could then be entrusted with all kinds of other knowledge, very powerful knowledge of like weapons and mystic powers and so on. Because having realized how all beings ultimately arise from Brahman and live by Brahman and move towards Brahman and merge in Brahman at the end, having known this, one would not misuse whatever power, whatever opulence, whatever knowledge he is given. Because he can understand this so-called self, which is just the ego, huh? my self, is only a figment of the imagination. It's only a temporary manifestation. It's only a wave in the ocean of consciousness. And by practicing concentration, one directly realizes all this. It's not enough to read it in a book. It's not enough to hear it from a video. You have to go and sit down and practice concentration yourself and realize it for yourself, not by any external means of knowledge, because Brahman is not revealed by that. Brahman is not revealed even by consciousness because Brahman never becomes the object of anything, including any process of knowledge. That is stated directly in another Upanishad. So that means Brahman, the self, reveals itself. There's no other instrument by which Brahman can be revealed because Brahman is not related to anything. <laughs> Brahman is completely transcendental and is not a doer either. So you might ask, well, if Brahman is not a doer and not a knower and has no consciousness and so on and is not related to anything and is never the instrument or the object of any process of whatsoever, then how does it reveal itself? Well, aham brahmasmi, <laughs> I am Brahman. And tattvamasi, thou art that Brahman. How do you know? Or how do I know? Well, let me ask you this. Are you conscious? And of course, you're going to say yes, right? How do you know you are conscious? There is no instrument. There is no means of measuring the presence or the actions of consciousness. Consciousness simply is what it is. <laughs> and it knows what it knows. And first of all, it knows itself. And this is Turiya. Consciousness of consciousness, awareness of awareness. And this is the bliss into which we are all headed and into which we will all merge in the end. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.